where he uh, received his Bachelor of Science in Medical Technology. And subsequent to his academic uh, career, he ran the largest DNA lab in the world under Dr. Uh, Henry Gershowitz, who is a renowned geneticist. And for the past 26 years, he's ran Fitztropics Medical Associates Next Door. And today we're very blessed to call him our medical director at Pure Life. And he's going to be sharing with us some critical and important information about COVID-19 and the impact and information that will help us navigate the next few weeks. Thanks, Jack Jack. No, I really, really, really appreciate that. Um, this, um, you know, our whole crew and um, we've been, my beautiful wife and I, watching, you know, the television and looking at the CDC website and there's so much conflicting information that um, the wife and I are throwing stuff at the TV. I want to do just do a quick presentation and anybody that had questions we wanted to address those especially we're all family. We work very closely together and it was a really scary time um, this weekend watching some of the things on television. Um, so we'll take questions at the end. Um, like Jackie said, I was a medical technologist, I ran a DNA lab, uh, ran a hospital lab, I worked in a DNA lab five years and then became a physician, a physician of over 25 years. Just a little family doctor in Largo, Florida, doing it for over 25 years. And the big part of the uh, presentation, the start of it, was the scaring of the entire population and fear normally just comes from a lack of knowledge or a lack of like what's kind of really going on. And that's when people kind of get uptight and a little scared. So I just wanted to remind everybody of a little history that in 2004 we had SARS, in 2008 the bird flu, 2010 the swine flu, Ebola, Zika, the mosquitoes, Ebola. So the corona needs to be respected. Of course it needs to be respected. The most important thing as a family doctor and loving all of you guys and we all work together is how is, can this affect each and every one of us especially when there's literally people dying you know three percent some of the death rates the mortality rates in china it was 3.4 percent mortality rate in south korea it was only 0 0.7 0 0.7 mortality rate in Italy, it's higher um, mortality rate. So the big thing people kind of get worried about is like, is this going to kill me? Because I see on TV that this is absolutely going to um, potentially kill people. So we greatly, greatly respect the coronavirus. I wanted to briefly let people know the Corona Verde family was discovered in 1968. The coronavirus has been around in various forms and yes, they can mutate and yes, they can change. The coronavirus, this particular COVID-19, acts on the ACE2 receptor in the lining of the lung. That's where it seems to be doing the most damage. When it binds that receptor, okay, it causes acute respiratory distress or ARDS, flash pulmonary edema. So. There is no drug for this bug, even though it's a virus, not technically a bug. The pathophysiology of how this virus works, that virus, okay, it's gotta be picked up from a surface or something, touch your face, nose, eat a sandwich, that has to get inside your cells of your body. It's an obligate intracellular, it's gotta get in the cell in order to replicate itself and spew the coryza, the fever, and the cough. It does appear to be more contagious as far as spreading a little more easily than even some of the flus and the previous viruses. That's where the danger is coming from. 3%. I really wish the press and the Surgeon General or some of our wonderful people, 3%. We respect 3% deaths. 3% is significant, right? It's, it's a lot of people, 3%. But how about 97% survive? 97% of people survive. Of the people that have been getting infected with the, the COVID-19, 
80% normally experience very mild symptoms, little coryza, runny nose, a little cough. They don't even know they had it. You know, many of them don't even know that they had coronavirus. The 20% remaining, 15% of those needed to at least go to the hospital and maybe get admitted because some of them were having trouble breathing. So the most important thing, kind of in a synopsis, it can be a nice little like sound bite really. This virus is a 3% mortality from all the data starting back from December. 3% is a significant number, okay? There is no drug to kill this bug, even though it's a virus, not a bug, but it's technically a bug. Therefore, the key, the absolute key, the only treatment, supportive care, IV fluids when needed, breathing treatments, ventilatory support, a ventilator, when they put the tube in your lungs and they breathe for you, is when the lungs get really congested and you get really tired and you can't continue to breathe if your lungs kind of get full of that fluid. So 97% of people survive. I mean, that's great news. We don't need to make a run on toilet paper. 97% of people survive. The 3%, yes, that's a, that's a number. That's a very respectable, we need to pay attention. So if there is no drug to kill this bug, how do we protect ourselves? The most important thing is we gotta use our head and stop the spread. We have to use our heads and stop the spread. The US is the most powerful country in the entire world from a healthcare system. We have a quarter million, around 250,000 ventilators available to anybody that might need that. My beautiful wife asked a great question yesterday. If an area like Washington in New York, if they're getting hit really bad, if we're checking the oxygen, the pulse ox, we've all seen a pulse ox and vital signs are vital, that's why they're called vital signs. So if someone gets a little cough, they're not feeling good, they're getting congested, if they're getting worse and worse, those patients could be transferred to other hospitals if that local area is full up with patients the problem with Italy was they ran out of ventilators in that during that time. So the most important thing is 97% of people survive, 97%. That's just the average right now with the mortality rate. So that's great news for everybody to kind of, there is no drug for this bug. 80% of people that actually test positive for the virus don't even know that they're sick or they have a little rise, a little cough, a little runny nose, and they improve and get better, and it runs its course. The 20% that are left over, 15% of those get really sick enough to go to the hospital and get admitted, and 3% of patients can pass away. The 3% that we've been seeing so far passing away, asthmatics, smokers, people with comorbid underlying conditions, they're taking steroids for lupus, or they're taking rheumatoid medications. Um, those are the people that are higher risk of getting sicker and sicker that might need a ventilator. As all of us, this is so fantastic. We, we will absolutely beat this like SARS and like swine flu and like pig flu. We're gonna win, that's fantastic. We just have to stop that huge spike in the number of cases ramming that many people through the system at one time because there's the only rate limiting step in this whole thing is the number of ventilators and the number of people getting sick at the same time. 97% survival rate, the people that really get sick need ventilatory support, ventilators, there's no antibiotic, there's no antiviral yet, so the treatment is purely supportive care and 97% can do well. So that's really, really important. The most important thing, the most important thing right now, which has really been pretty fantastic, is calm everybody down, 3% mortality rate. 3% are gonna pass away. Not much we can do and that's a big number and that's kind of scary and it's upsetting, but 97% of people survive. So now, testing, 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 it's really important. Right? I mean, everybody's been with me 20 years and 10 years and Deborah, never treat the test, treat the patient. So I've done several, and Selma has too, 
nasal swabs for the corona. Just an example for the testing. Our daughter Kobe had a sore throat. We, we didn't test her for corona, but we did a swab on the throat and the throat swab can come back negative because it didn't get all the way back to the tonsil. We did a blood draw, the ASO titer and the mono spot. Kobe had strep and mono at the same time. There's a nasal swab test for corona and there's a blood test for corona. And the mouth. What's that? And the oral, and the oral swab. Thank you so much, and the oral swab. So again, the most important thing is, I know like they're really harping on testing, 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 and go through the drive-through and get that thing rammed up your nose and we'll give you a call if you got it. Well, don't treat the paper, treat the patient. If you test positive for it, there's still no panic. Vital signs. Vital signs are vital. That's why they're called vital signs. Vital signs are vital. That's why they're called vital signs. Temperature, pulse, O2 sat, the pulse ox. Hypotensive, a low blood pressure with a heart rate over 100. Hypotensive, tachycardic with a fever over 100 is sick. Hypotensive, tachycardic with a fever needs to go to the hospital. Pressure in the 80s or 90s, like normally 120s over 80. If your systolic, the top number is 80, 90, and your heart is 120, you're getting dehydrated and the fever is making you lose too much water. Then you can get shock liver, shock kidneys, you know, sepsis, as they're saying on TV. So if your heart rate's over 120, Gatorade, Gatorade, water, you know, supportive care. There is no drug for this bug. The treatment for this virus is symptomatic care, Tylenol for the fever, fluids, 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 water is not great. Gatorade, Pedialyte, something with electrolytes. That's what brings the pressure up. I'm an ER doc, too. You come to the ER. Do I give you water if you're dehydrated? A glass of water? No, I give you normal saline, salt water. I shouldn't take salt, salt's bad for you. <laughs> no, we give you normal saline or lactated ringers intravenously, but that's, let's say, 83 cc's an hour into the vein. You can drink a half a liter in 30 seconds. If the mouth is working and we're not throwing up, you can hydrate a hell of a lot quicker with a couple things of Gatorade. We can only run it in your vein at 83 to 100 cc's an hour. 100 cc's an hour is okay, but you can drink way better. Gatorade, Pedialyte, something with electrolytes. That's what brings your pressure back up so the kidneys can make urine and keep all that stuff kind of going. So symptomatic care, symptomatic care. The number one thing for all of us, right? All of us working and really healthy, pretty normal for the most part, <laughs> even if we get the virus, 93% of everybody, like all of us should survive, all pretty young and healthy. I've got asthma, I'm at a little higher risk of getting really sick, but that's what the vital signs are for. Vital signs, yeah, you do the test, great, do the test. The most important thing is seeing your provider, doctor, whoever, and checking that O2 set, blood pressure, and pulse. Hypotensive, tachycardic, high heart rate with a fever needs to go to the hospital. That's really the important criteria that every patient really needs to know out there. Low blood pressure with a high heart rate, heart rate in the 120s, you know, that's really important that they go get checked out because the treatment is IV fluids and supportive care to keep all that going. So then, now that that's kind of set aside and taken care of, the number one thing we can do, right, as a group and our, and our practices and all of us, we gotta use our heads and stop the spread. We just, we just gotta stop the spread. And that's what the quarantines and the stop in the schools and keeping people from the sports events, really, really good ideas to kind of shelter in place and take it easy, but we can go on with our normal day almost all of us as far as working and stuff like that, as long as we're not sick. Some of this is just like the flu and the other instructions. If you're sick, you should really stay home so you don't infect anybody else at work, you know, so we don't infect them. That's the most important thing. Fluids, hydration, and rest, that's really, really important. So again, just to synopsize, really, I, it was really, really important because it's really been a bunch of doom and gloom out there. And the weekend was really rough watching the TV because there's runs on toilet paper and groceries and everybody's kind of losing their mind a little bit. 
which I understand. We respect Corona. We respect COVID-19. We respect the 3% deaths. But knowledge can really take the temperature down in the room for all of our families. If you go to the CDC website, which is some of the information directly from there, because documentation beats conversation. I didn't make all this stuff up. I just read it, you know, last night and of course a couple nights before. And the important thing is when you look at the disease and the disease process, it's an RNA virus. It is a virus, a respiratory virus. There is no drug for this bug. So if we indeed test positive and get it, the treatment is use your head and do not spread. Use your head and don't spread it. Because 15% that are gonna get really sick are the ones that need our attention next door and hospital and ventilatory support if needed. The, the generation from the first runny nose and feeling really bad to the peak of symptoms is usually one to 14 days. So during that 14 days, if their oxygen is you know, kind of getting lower and lower or their pulse is getting higher, those are the ones that need to be admitted and go to the hospital. Really the criteria, hypotensive, tachycardic with a fever, those are the ones that need the medical attention the most. So we can stop, we really can make it through this like all the other ones with SARS and MERS and swine flu and bird flu, right? We made it through all of those with no trouble. Why is this one different? This one is acting a little different than, than MERS and SARS in the fact that it seems to be a little more easily spread, a little more contagious, a little more easily spread. So when you get that many people getting infected at the same time, 15% of those are gonna need those ventilators and care. So if we can just you know, stop the spread, stop the spread, slow the spread, like on TV, they'll take that curve they're talking about and flatten that curve. When he's a great guy, I love the scientist. When he's trying to flatten that curve, he's meaning stop the spread, stop the spread, stop the spread. That's contact precautions. We're washing everything, the hands, the handrails, the doorknobs and everything. And if you're sick, we just you know stay home and shelter in place. Luckily, we do have each other to do vital signs and get checked all the time. <laughs> So with all the doom and gloom and the stuff on TV all weekend, we really are the greatest medical country in the world, medically. We have the resources, the people, but this is really up to us, like in this room. The vital signs are vital. That's why they're called vital. Someone's getting sick, they need to get their vitals checked, you know, every day, every other day, some self-reporting, of course. Then there is no drug for this bug, Tylenol, fluids, symptomatic care. If they get really sick, hypotensive tachycardic fever, those are the ones that need to be swabbed as well and sent to the hospital. But again, test, test, test. Oh my God, I need the test. They said free test on TV. The te never treat the test. Don't treat the paper. Treat the patient. 80% of people that test positive are gonna be asymptomatic, 80%. So you don't treat the test per se, except for if they test positive, it tells us, look, they need to go by themselves in their room for a couple weeks till the virus quits shedding. The positive test does help us to stop the spread. The key to this whole situation is stop the spread. Use your head to stop the spread. And that's by what we were talking about. You feel sick, stay home. We can get the test. If you're positive, it's two weeks, self-quarantine. I've got instructions out of self-quarantine. That's not really hard. Stay in your room. Kleenex is in one trash bag. When you go out of the room, you wash your hands. If you use the kitchen, use even disposable utensils so we don't infect anybody else in the household as best we can. But I hope that was a little calming because when I saw the TV and I saw the mortality rates, mortality rates, mortality rates, 3.4% is significant. There are people passing away from this. There are, but 97% of people, 97, with good hand washing, avoidance of getting it, really are doing fantastic, and this will be okay. This will be okay like the swine flu, the bird flu, the Zika. We will beat this just with all of us using our collective heads to stop the spread. Um, anybody have questions?